back. Hey! You can finish. Go ahead. Yeah, gracias. Sure. <laughs> Yesterday it was like this. Today we got Janelle back. And I saw him. He did a good job again. Then he Stop. went boom. That was cool. Well, that was my favorite. Part. A lot of what I do is cool. So. <laughs> Well, we gotta, we're going to talk today, family, and again, we want you to share these conversations, spread the word about the Moody Radio family here through Brian and Janelle, give your comments. Yesterday, I had really probably, I haven't verified this, record-breaking heart emojis that came through. Wow. I and mean, then you know they were for you because you were the only one here. Right. I did. I mean, I did beg for them. You did? <laughs> <laughs> it's over and but over it and probably over. was record breaking. <laughs> that was good. That's but good. Today we're talking about a thing that you may think it's just you, but it's your internal critic. And there's an article we found that I really don't recommend at all, except for the the concept and the little thesis I found in here. But it talks about how our internal critics enslave us. And so essentially, what's going on in here is it talks about that fine line between critical thinking that guides you towards self-improvement. Like, wow, you know, next time I could do that better yeah. by doing X, Y, and Z. And this, it says, our, our capacity for merciless self-criticism. We tend to go far beyond the self-corrective lucidity necessary for improving our shortcomings. Instead, berating and belittling ourselves for our foibles with a special kind of masochism. Like, and and she's nodding her head and smiling. Now, you might not know this about Janelle. You're thinking to yourself, look at her. She homeschools her kids. She's got a healthy marriage. Her hair looks nice. She's, she's, she's on the radio. She's in ministry. She doesn't have internal critic problems. Oh, oh my goodness. Do you beat yourself up? It's my main issue. My son, my oldest son, tells me all the time. My husband was like, oh, my goodness. Like, he'll stop me sometimes. He'll be like... If a friend of yours talked to you the way you talk to yourself, you would like cut them out of your life. You know, like you forget, like you know, like you wouldn't accept that from other people. The way, the things you say to yourself over and over. And you will let things. I know we've talked before where, after the show, you'll go home and for the next twenty four hours. Yeah. You will wreck yourself. And replay them. I'll replay stuff. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And it's in different areas. In the last few weeks, the Lord has been working on me, but it's a natural thing I have. And I think it's mixed in. That's why it's hard to identify and get rid of. Because it's mixed in with this, like, oh, I just want to do better. And I messed up. And how can I do better? But, but it's like you said, you're walking that fine line. But when you said it enslaves us, what, what is your take on what it enslaves you from? Well, I mean, it's like an incomplete look at the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's this disposition that the gospel brings us where, yes, we are a disaster. Like we're, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God and thought we're indeed all the time. But that's not the good news. That's terrible news. The good news is that in spite of that, God loves us anyway. Yeah. And he died for our sins and he wants to help us. And he wants us to be more holy. Yeah. And and so what that produces is kind of like a, yeah, I'm a mess, but he loves me anyway. Isn't that great? Not a, oh, I'm such a disaster. How does he love me? Yeah. But yeah. we get stuck there no matter who we are. Somebody was just saying, um, uh, Harriet said, I have trouble with past mistakes haunting me. Hollis says, was this guy in my house watching me? Like yeah. she feels like, wow, that's me. Yeah. For me, when you said enslaved, it made me think of, it stops us from the main thing, which is to be productive. You know, even if, and especially when it's God's work, it's like you're so inefficient, or oh, I know I am, when my mind gets going that way. Like, let's say even in terms of creativeness, now you're fearful, now you don't step out of the box, you don't think outside of the box, because you're like so hard on yourself that you give yourself no flexibility to... I'm going to mess up, but it's going to be okay, and I'm going to try better next time. We don't extend grace to ourselves. Yeah. Now, we want grace, and we demand it in interpersonal things, right? Like, if we do something wrong, we want someone to give us mercy and grace, not justice. When someone else does something wrong, we want justice for them. But internally, we don't do that. Right. We punish ourselves. I mean, I uh, for, for me, it's two things. It's I beat myself up about the way I parent and the way I'm a husband. 
I will regularly have these internal voices saying, man, you are not a very good father. So it's not a woman then, the no. thing. No. Because it's, uh, we get told that a lot in terms of we're in our heads a lot, we're, you know, like, um, we're very mental and people assume that guys don't struggle. With oh, I mean, maybe I'm the only one. Or may, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe society has told men you can't share that. You well, gotta be strong. But it, 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 is, it is. Well, I don't know. I mean, because I only know what what happens to me. I would yeah. imagine it's a human condition. But yes. I can tell you, for me, it is a regularly going. Like I see other. I know other men who are honestly, objectively better fathers than me. And that doesn't help. Like the things they do with their kids. Like some of the stuff Len does. I hear it and I go. My gosh, why can't I do that? Some of his intentional walks with the kids and the time he spends. And so I'll sit there and beat myself up about it internally, which, quite frankly, isn't helpful. It's not helpful. And uh, it's kind of like comparing your inner world with somebody else's outer world. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. You don't know what that father, in my case, mother, what their struggles are in here what you're thinking they're nailing they're failing in other areas which kind of helps that whole thing you and I are passionate about about people putting their guards down and being real like we're all going home all of us the people that you think are nailing it going home like man I messed up do you see what I'm saying but yeah. oh, you you accentuate what you see and you don't see things behind closed doors you don't know that's for everybody you know and, and we forget that social media does that a lot where you see all the highlights yeah, it doesn't help yeah. It doesn't help. A lot of comments coming in. Sheila says, I'm always comparing myself, my faith, my parenting to those. Wow, always. you guys are being very transparent. Thank you, because I that's reassuring. I struggle with that. Oh, it's just me. I struggle with that. Like, for example, this is so ridiculous. Just bear with me, since we're all being honest. Like, I'll take somebody like Priscilla Shira and be like, oh my gosh, why can't my faith be strong like hers? She's amazing, and her dad's amazing. I'm just saying. I don't know what she does in her car, in her bedroom. I don't know what struggle she has with the Lord. You know, or the woman, just because you go to somebody's house and their, their house is spotless, you'll go home thinking, oh my gosh, my house doesn't look like this. You yeah, got no idea what this person struggles with. Yeah, they probably None spent two all. days cleaning it, so what do you want? Exactly. Because they knew you were coming. Exactly. <laughs> do uh, you struggle with comparing? Oh, Whether oh, it's oh. big figures or, or people around oh. you. What do you do all mostly? Is it people look like people around you or is it social media that gets you into the comparison? See, I don't get a lot of the FOMO, the fear of missing out. My yeah. friend Kathleen, that was one of her big struggles and she wouldn't mind me saying that she said it before publicly with social media. For me, it's it's more often people I really know and I spend time with. Mm. Like I'll, uh, like my, my pastor is so inspiring to me, Pastor Doug Selesky, about how, how much he loves Jesus and loves the gospel and I see him and there's times when I'll go, what is wrong with you? Why don't you love Jesus that much? Or, you know, you see a, a dad at church and they're just doing something cool with their kids. Yeah. You're like, really? You took your kid camping? I can hardly even take my kids to the park without getting irritated. So we're talking about the problem. But see, How I think do you get out of, of that people. thinking? Well, I want to get to that, but I want to be sure. I think there were some guys that weighed in, and I want to find out if I really was alone here. Chuck says, Chuck said, here, right? oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so and Mike I'm far too critical of myself. Uh, but very like gracious as well. to others. Oh, yeah. Rob says he tells his wife this all the time, that she's so hard on, on herself. Rob Finn. Sheila says, I have low self-esteem. Honestly, I'd rather self-deprecate to those around me than have those same people say the same thing to my face. In some ways, it's easier to hear it from myself. Yeah. Kate Cat says, we are all our worst critics, comparing ourselves and looks if you have curly hair, if you want straight hair, some people get everything nice, house, cars, and so forth, but the grass is always greener on the other side. We do not know their struggles, and trust me, if everyone has was transparent, we would see it all. Yeah. So do you think everybody struggles with the internal critic? Is that kind of what Kat's saying, like we all... That's Kat's assertion. I wasn't willing to go that far yet, but I, it seems to be a typical human condition is we're all our own worst critic. Now, they're all... There's people out there that you think are arrogant jerks. I would, in my experience, they're really the most insecure people around, and that's why they're arrogant. They're overcompensating for their weakness, uh, but you never know. Heather says, "I think social media puts a false facade for us all. We compare what they have or what they're doing. It is a challenge to know Christ is enough, 
and we are enough for Christ, just but, the way we are. And see, I agree with you, Heather, 100%, but I don't want to let the, the reality of the harshness of the internal critic slip by. Because I think often the conversation correctly starts there, where it's like, oh, Janelle, it's social media. It's, oh, you're just comparing their vacation, you don't really know about their argument, da 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 But I'm talking about when we objectively encounter a human being outside of your smartphone that literally is doing something way better than you. Yeah. So what do you do? Do you cheer for them? You turn at yourself and go, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Do you want you to do that? Yeah. You hear about a great mom, you don't go, look at how great a mom she is. Lord bless her for being such a great mom. You go, oh, I am I, not I a good mom. That. Is that what you do? Yeah. I'm not, I don't want to project it on you. No, yeah, I do that. In different areas. In different areas. I'm trying to think, oh, like, oh my gosh. I'm horrible at structure. Like, Len's better than I am. So when I see a mom that's, like, very detailed in the home, it makes me feel like, Oh my gosh, my kids are going to grow up all messed up. <laughs> Look at how this person oh, yeah. has it together. I've almost started to prepare myself for the day when my kids all get together and go, Well, Dad, we know you you, you get an A for effort, but oh, we're all right. pretty messed up. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, what, what did uh, somebody was agreeing with somebody? Really, we got to catch that. Kat so. says she agrees with Stacy. Stacy says, I judge myself, myself very harshly. People look at me and think I have it all together. I'm a director, wow, at my company, a leader at my church, but I'm riddled with insecurity and self-doubt. There it is. Do you see? That's what I'm talking about. People who we think have it all together. I think people probably imagine that about you, Janelle. Yes, and my favorite hobby is like breaking that and telling people, like, <laughs> I love doing that. And then, but I gotta catch myself, and this is what I did a couple weeks ago. First, my thinking is changing because of the Lord, and then catching myself, like, man, because I want to break that and tell people, like, no, this is who I really am, I don't want to find, I don't want to make people look at me like I'm not victorious, like I'm not filled with joy, like there's a something about our faith where we can't look broken all the time, Ryan, like to just walk around talking about, man, I'm a mess, I'm a mess, after a while, it's like, are you serious? You don't think, like, there's something in us that has to portray it, but it's not me it's Jesus or or something some hope you yeah, know we, we can't stay there yeah but I wanted to be sure we start at the moment where because usually how these conversations go is somebody in like in our position that where we speak for a living or whatever will come to you and go well everybody that was me but if you get holy like me you won't have this problem and we are we're to tell you we got the problem yeah we are just as bad as you. I can't tell you how many times yes. I've had something I, I said to Janelle where I fretted about it all day to the point I had to call her and be like, I'm so sorry. She's like, wait, what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've called, yeah. you've, I've had you come sit in my office before the show starts and you go, here's what I said to so-and-so yesterday. I think I just ruined everything. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what I was thinking saying that. I just don't know how to talk to people. And they don't even know what happened. It you happens with my siblings. Up. My siblings would be like, oh my gosh, you'll bring stuff up like weeks later and nobody was even thinking about that. <laughs> I saw Robert jumped in with something I wanted to see too because... <laughs> Robert, Robert, yes, Brian, I continue to question my value as a man, yet I prefer to use those moments to motivate me to help myself and others become better. Yes, okay, so there it is. And that's the turning point. Thank you for that, Robert. Because Robert feels that same thing. He's questioning his value as a man. I mean, I actually had somebody once call, leave me a voicemail that said, Brian, and I'm going to simulate. They said, Brian, you are the worst example of manhood in all of Northeast Ohio. What? And so that caused me for weeks to question my value as a man. Trust me. But wow. Robert's got something figured out here. He takes that and he's able to turn it to not be critical but constructive yeah so believers if this is something we all struggle with how do we convince ourselves the gospel is true because think about the value God had we are a disaster look I'm a terrible dad and a terrible husband and Jesus died for me anyway he loves me so much unconditionally that he died for me anyway right and rose again that he would be the substitutionary atonement for my sin and so it's not a, a tragedy. It's not a sad story that ends there. Like, there is joy in the Christian life. 
in the midst of our internal critics. So how do we make that turn when we're beating ourselves up? Yeah. Kat says, Brian and Janelle, well, you both are awesome. Let me tell you, I just getting up to go uh, work out and skip my devotion until later and boom, you come on. So I think that's a divine intervention from God himself. So now my day will start out where I'm fed with the word and fellowship. This is all because of your obedience to continue this live broadcast. Yeah, oh, well, I'm so glad you're here, Cap. But I, I don't know why I have a hard time receiving those things, but I always hear that and I go, ah, oh, <laughs> But no, that, that we want this to be like a fellowship for you. And so I'm glad. This ought to be where we get together as believers and say, look, we're family. we got to get better at this. We're all struggling, but the gospel is true. We need to preach the gospel to ourselves every day. Mike says we have to forgive ourselves. David says compare who we used to be to who God made us today. Yeah. One of the things that has helped me, and there's other things, but just to make it quick. Um... The, the internal critic in terms of the what I'm criticizing matters. Like why, the why. So before it was like what people think or like my result. And as I'm working through some things with the Lord, I've let that go <laughs> and just been like, even with the kids and how they turn out, it's not on me. Like results are not on me. I've put it in the Lord's hands and just like, like what is on me is my effort and my faithfulness and just like why I do it. I do it for him. Not to fit a mold, not to compare to so-and-so, not to get an applause, not even for the kids to be thankful, you know? Like, <laughs> so I think the why matters. We care at the, like at the, like at the root of it. You don't think it's some of that? Like we want affirmation from other people oh. and you can't control that. Oh, it's absolutely, that's absolutely right. We want people to look at us and go, man, you're great. Yeah. And you are, and we worry about what other people think of us. But you're right. If you shift the question to, would God be pleased by what I did? Yeah. You know, where I, I, when I um, was starting out as a public speaker, one of our, my dear friends, David Williams, he's on our show. And uh, one of the things I learned in some of the speaking classes, this transfers to life. They were saying, um, be mindful of your audience. Be mindful of your audience in terms of your message. And David Williams caught me and was like, actually, that doesn't work when it's God. He said, you're mindful of God. And he gave me examples on where God gave him a message that was completely opposed to the audience he knew God was going to put him in front of. Like he knew that he was going to upset people. But he said, I walked away feeling good because I gave him the message. And how many pro prophets and people in scripture you see like that? Like you got to go and give it and say, I did what the Lord told me to do. So if you transfer that to scripture, people around you may not like it. You may not fit in. You know, you may mess up. But in terms of what does God think about what I did, what, I, what I'm doing, does that help you at all? Well, like, does that it make does, sense? but I, I think over time I've learned there's a there's a twist to that. Yeah. Because God doesn't only care about what we do, but how we do it. Well, yeah, yeah. And so what people will use that as permission for is like they'll say, look, uh, I got bad internal critics, so I don't care what people think of me anymore. Wow. So I'm just going to spew truth at them, and if they don't like it, I must have been doing something good. No, that that's not the litmus test. We we are to we're the salt and light, as in. We're so appealing that we're the light in the dark room. Like our love for Christ is so contagious that people want to come and see it. Okay. That we're salt. We're making the gospel taste better. We're not pouring salt on wounds. So if you can walk away and say, would God be pleased not just with what I did, but how I did it? We can walk away going, okay. But I, your main you. litmus test is, did I please God? Because did I, did if I your litmus with, test is, did I please other people? That can, I mean, I, I agree. God I think doesn't want before, necessarily yes. what people think they want to hear or what they want. That yeah. goes with our kids. Yes. You know, no, or you're, you're, you're right though. I just want to be clear that it we can't just ask ourselves, did I speak truth? Oh no. That honors the Lord. Did I honor the Lord? Is did your your means yeah. honor the Lord as well? Yeah. And if that's the case, I think we can have a little bit more peace about it. Yeah. But that's I, I think it's a good point you brought up from David Williams too, because it's a debate I've had about Christian media with people in the radio business and outside of it. 
there's many people, like if you're in secular media, the idea is find out what people want and give it to them. Like, you know, if you're a radio station that plays heavy metal or whatever it is, find out what they like and give it to them. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're supposed to do as Christians? Right. Give people what they like right. and what they want? No, that right. sounds like like one of the warnings against the church, one of the seven churches in Revelation. Yeah. Another way it transfers to marriage, I was in a Bible study with a dear friend, and we talked about it with Nancy Kane. We're not called to give our, or to make our spouse happy. We're called to make our spouse more and more like Jesus. And there are things that Len should do with and to me or whatever that I may not like and it may not be what I want to hear or whatever, but as a faithful husband, he has to do, do you see what I'm saying? Like in terms of making me more and more and present me to the Lord like Jesus. So that's where I'm going with, I shouldn't be concerned about whether I made my family happy, my husband. It's about, Lord, I'm going to be faithful and I'm taking the next step. But see, that you want like it, it helped me with the internal critic. You well, know? I was, I'm glad you said that because I know you well enough to know that what you're going to do is you're going to say that because you know it's true and you believe it and you're practicing it, and you're going to drive home and critique yourself and how you talked about that. Oh yeah, yeah. So I don't want yeah. someone to think, and I know you. If people know you, they know that they know this is true about you. But yeah, they're yeah. new to us. You're not saying that from a point of conquering it. You're oh, saying no. as a point of that's one of your weapons in the battle that's uh, Hello, yeah, like a few weeks ago, the Lord kind of, and a lot of it is this thing in society where we're like, we got to fit a mold or this Pinteresty thing, like you got to be a certain type of mom or, do you know? And so the Lord has caught, like, it's where I'm failing, where he's like, he's teaching me what defines either success or what def where I'm supposed to fit and it's helping with the internal critic. Robert says, I certainly don't have all the answers, but one positive moment reflection for me is recognizing that if I believe God feels I'm worthy to carry his message, then I must be valuable and therefore I should hold my head high. Life may cause me to bow down from time to time, but I have to look to the hills. Why not think I'm great? Yeah, Humble, no. but we are all great. No, that, that is so true, because that's what I was talking about, about if we preach the gospel to ourselves, the end result is not de being defeated. The end result is the joy and the knowledge that we're saved in spite of how much of a mess we are. Yeah. And so that's kind of what Robert is saying. It's the, yeah, we are a mess. And there's something freeing about being able to admit that. And I, I think that is part of it, too. I, 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 one of the things I admire about my wife mm -hmm. is she's got no trouble... Just laying it out there about the fact that she's a mess. And that, you'll watch as that frees a group of people. Like us doing this now. If we started this off by saying, tell us about the worst thing you say to yourself and about your internal critics, we, it would be crickets. But since you and I came in here and said we're our own worst critics and we talked about it with specificity, that frees people around us to know they do the same thing. And guess what? In that kind of Christian community, we can grow in an intimacy with Christ because we can know, okay, we're not alone. We're all in the same boat. We all need Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So I That's hope that so helps true. somebody today. Mike says sometimes he feels like God is waiting for for him to fail and to punish me. And Sheila says yeah. it's hard to stop critiquing yourself when you don't feel valued and that people are criticizing you. Yeah, it's true. No, I, I get it. Uh and, and sometimes says, people yeah. experience that more than others, though. You know, there are people who are going through it right now where people are just all over them at work or at home. Yeah. Critique, critique, treat, yeah. critique. But, um, you know, that's why we need community. But we've also got to we got to give glory to God. We've got to coach ourselves out of this yeah. and preach the gospel to ourselves yeah. every day. Ira says, you can't blame social media for your internal critic. We have this issue way before social media was ever thought of. Brian is right that we are our worst critics. Christians sometimes put themselves down too much. Christians keep telling themselves that God does not care about flaws, but Christians keep telling themselves that we're not good enough for God's love. I have this God-shaped hole in my heart, etc., etc. It is hard to take Christians seriously if you said God doesn't care about our flaws, but we constantly keep thinking about it. Yeah, well, see, here's the thing. He does care about our flaws so much he sends his son to die for us. Mm -hmm. You know? But I think Ira makes so many great points uh, that's true. 
and hopefully this sets somebody free today, or at least gets them on the right track to recovery. And uh, because you know we all go through this, we're we're in the trench with you. We haven't figured this thing out yet. No, and I think I don't think you ever get to the point where you figure it out. To be honest, I think <laughs> it's like a way of having to come to the cross constantly. You know, I think we're we always will have that tendency. Maybe part of it's pride. Maybe part of it is being entangled in the world. Uh-huh. You know, I don't think we'll ever be fully released. Maybe some people are, but I think it to me it's created a dependence on God to remind me of who I am in him. Yes. Yeah, I mean, are you a mess? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So am I. Yeah. God loves you anyway. He doesn't want you to beat yourself up. He wants you to look at the cross. Yeah. And strive to be like him. That's right. So hopefully that helps you today. You can, uh, nice to see Lauren Cuevas showed up at the very last moment. Lauren! Hey, Lauren. (laughs) So, uh, hey, you guys, love you. We'll see you tomorrow, dark and early. Yeah, hasta luego. Oh, I got to turn it up. I work here. My name is Brian. (laughs) Hello.